Okay, so today we're gonna go over my tips for starting an Etsy in 2020, but there's some things you should know about me first before we dive in, okay? Some things you should consider before you take my advice. One, I have only been doing Etsy for about a year now, so I'm really not an expert in the business, but that could be helpful because I'm a newcomer, a pretty newcomer, so from a newcomer to a newcomer, newcomer, is that even a thing? The other thing you should know, I do not handcraft anything. I sell digital prints and I use drop shipping and not the drop shipping, calm down, not the drop shipping where I'm selling and misleading people from selling things on Alibaba or whatever. I'm using drop shippers to print my designs on. So I use Printify, you can see in my other videos, that's what I do. I'm not hand making anything. So I don't know, That might, I just want you to know that up front because there's um, probably a lot of other things that need to go into those types of shops where you're hand making stuff or not just selling digital files. So if you're, you know, these are probably more general tips. Okay, so let's go over these tips and also just things you should know if you're gonna be starting Etsy. So let's dive in. First thing, which I made, I just made a video about in the same shirt, you, you can go see it. It's the ODR, which is Order Dissatisfaction Rate, which is a new thing implemented in 2019. Basically, if you get two warnings, then your shop is under consideration for permanent or yeah permanent ban or permanent suspension. Basically, your shop can sh get shut down in a way it never could before on Etsy. So um, I'll link to the video below, and also I'll link to the page that explains ODR from Etsy. But it's something that you need to be aware of. Just you know, of course, you're going to be striving for good service when you're using Etsy, but it's something that you should be aware of because who knows? There could be a time when it will affect you and another thing I guess we'll just get some negative things out of the way first is people getting their shop shut down fairly quickly I see it all over Reddit all the time and some of the main two issues are infringement and also um, VPN I don't really know I guess like if you use a VPN or something with IPs then you could get shut down by Etsy, which a lot of people are upset about. I don't do any of that, so I don't think I would ever do it. But another way is if you had, like, if you hired, like, a marketer to log into your Etsy and they logged in, like, in a different IP, I think, you could get shut down. These tips are not starting out strong, are they? I should have started off with something better. I'm just trying to warn you about some things, get some bad things out of the way first. The other thing is infringement. So many people, because I see everyone else do on Etsy, um, like copywriting like Disney stuff or doing trademark infringement on like Disney stuff and all you know that type of popular pop culture stuff that is infringement I doubt many of them have a license to be able to do that or are a partner of any of those companies so just be careful about those things some companies like Airbnb like you can use their logo they made a statement about like anyone using their logo I believe so just do your research and that's like two of the main reasons why I shops get shut down besides the new ODR. So those are the, the bad things about starting Etsy that you should be aware of before you really get into it because if you're planning on taking, you know, Mickey Mouse and doing something with that, you should just rethink your plan here now. And going on to all of that, this tip might seem a little overboard if you're just starting, but I really do recommend starting other channels right away when you're starting your Etsy. And you might think that's not necessary. You don't even know if your Etsy is going to succeed. You don't want to do that, which I get that, but at least have it in the back of your mind within one to three months of starting your Etsy, having your own website or some other channel. You know, I think you have to pay for like Amazon handmade, but even some things work on eBay, just having another option because your Etsy shop could get shut down. It might change in a way you don't like. Plus, it's just good to have another outlet. Not everyone wants to shop on Etsy. So that's something that I wish I would have done. I'm only now starting another website and it would be it would have been a lot easier if I had done it right away. The third tip is to already have in your mind how are you going to offer free shipping on every product or free shipping on products 35 and over on your, with orders 35 and over on your shop because that's another policy that Etsy implemented this year where if you have free shipping or the Free shipping over 35, you're going to get prioritized prioritized in the search results. So before you're even starting your shop, you need to think about if you're going to include like the shipping in the cost of the item and just say all items have free shipping, which is what I do, or offer it on 35 um, orders 35 plus. So because you might as well start off with that advantage. You don't want to not have that. If that's the way Etsy's going to play the game, you, you might as well play the game because 
it's already hard to get your, you know, depending on what you're selling, especially to get your SEO, to get hop, to get high in the listing. So definitely figure out how to make your shop have free shipping. And like I said, it could be as simple as adding the cost of your shipping into your product. It kind of depends. The next thing, which I made a big mistake on, was do not go overboard on listings and also don't skip skimp out on listings. I made the mistake of going overboard. I didn't really know what I was doing, and it's easy for me to do that because I was using like drop shipping, so I could like do so many different designs and like different products. Versus if you're doing something handmade, maybe that won't be an issue, but maybe you have more of an issue of needing to put up more variations and more listings. But you know, if you don't really know what you're focused on and you don't really have a plan, like I didn't. Um, you actually can end up paying quite a lot in listing fees. So if you're not really selling anything and you keep renewing them, then that could be a cost that's really not worth it because if you're not getting any views, you're not selling them, you need to reevaluate those items and see if it's really worth it in the end because it can be pretty hefty to keep renewing items. And it's, it can go the other way. If you don't have enough, you might never get, never get viewed in um, searches and you know going along with all of this you just need to evaluate um, what you're selling and the titles and the keywords and everything you're using because a lot of times people don't even really write anything in their titles which is a huge um, part of getting found on Etsy so just don't go overboard with your listings and don't slack on them either okay and the next tip is the more info the better so in your listings Add as much info as you can and make sure you organize it in a way that makes sense to the buyer. And if it's not super important, but it's important, have it towards the bottom. Whatever you need to do, you know, if you need to repeat information from, you know, about your shipping or whatever you need, make sure it's in there. One, just to protect yourself. So if a, if a buyer like has an issue, can be like, well, it is listed in all my listings. And also because a lot of times people don't read that stuff, but you need to have it in there because some people do read it and... Um, I made the mistake of not including some information that I didn't even think was that important in some of my listings and you can easily bulk edit all your listings so it's not a problem if you forget to add something or you want to delete something but I just think you know adding in the sizing adding in um, things you might not even think about like the material those things are pretty common but depending on what you're selling there might be things you know maybe you want to include that everything's made in the USA or that you use recycled packaging you should include it there, not just in like your shop description and whatever. So make sure to make it look pretty and organize it and look for spelling mistakes too, because I've noticed in some of mine when you're, you know, editing, you might miss something or you have like some weird repeated thing in there and just take the care to do that. Um, I definitely need to do a better job of that last part too, because when I'm bulk editing, sometimes you can like mess something up a little, you never realize it. So I just think having the more info, the better. And going along with that, you could also add in pictures about of information within the pictures of the listing. I know a lot of people do that because a lot of people don't always take the time to read your description. So I don't personally do that yet, but I think I'm going to start because I wish I would have started doing that. It would have made it a lot easier than going back and having to add in pictures and for all my different types of listings. So I think that that's something you should really consider, especially if you're gonna do digital downloads, you know, having something in there about it not being delivered in a photo form. Um, just those are some things to consider. I wish I would have done that. I just think taking the time to add in those details will really help you in the long run. So another tip is actually adding in options and variations, I believe they're actually called on your listings. And it might not just be because you're offering two different colors. So there's a variation tool where you can add in, oh, do you want blue, red, pink, and they can select that option. And you can only have, I think, up to two variations. But I saw a really great tip on Reddit for like during the holiday season, adding in a variation that said um, that people have to select this before they check out. So it says, I understand this will not ar arrive by like Christmas. And the other option is like, well, I don't know what the other option would be. But basically you can use variations in that type of way, which I had never thought about. So you could basically use it as a confirmation that the person knows this even more because maybe they didn't read your listing saying, well, you know, my processing time is two weeks. It's not going to get there by Christmas. So you need to think about it in ways like that. And another thing that I didn't do was um, if you need them to add a bunch of information into their personalization box. So like I, on some things they can put in the year, the name and like something else. At least I would recommend putting like the year as a required field into one of the variations, because for me, a lot of times they wouldn't put anything. So 
and most of the times they forgot they did not want it so I'd have to like re reach out to them and you know confirm do they want this blah 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 so it saved a lot of time in the long run making the options like 2019 2020 and then like no year or and then like you can add an other or whatever so you know people forget it'll just save you time in the long run I know you'll probably have to go through and change those options um when the years change but I think that it would be definitely worth it in the long run, especially depending on your products. Some products I didn't have an issue with that, but some I did. And when it came to the holiday season, when I had a ton of people ordering those products, it really helped to them already have to fill out the year. So I didn't have to re reach out to them and make sure they didn't want the year or they did want the year. And of course, the obvious thing is photography for your listings. I still see so many listings on Etsy that aren't really great quality and they seem kind of sketchy. So I think you know, even if you're not good at it, investing in like having someone come over like for a one time thing and take pictures of whatever or having someone you know take um, pictures for your listings will make a huge difference. And, you know, adding in different call outs to your listing photos. So like people put like Photoshop or whatever, like a little circle, like saying like, add your picture here or whatever. So just keeping in mind um, the the main image you have for your listings that will call people in mind. Of course, that's an obvious thing, but the type of quality people expect on different products changes. So you need to be keeping up with that and looking at the top, you know, selling listings or what your competitors are doing. So that's a really important thing to also consider when you're starting your Etsy. And the last tip I have is kind of more of a, on like a warning, which is be careful about using vacation mode. I used it. I only had it on for like a day and then I, I turned it off because I was, um, I had only turned it off because I had like gotten like really bad sore in my hand from like doing Etsy so much during the holidays or whatever. So I turned it off for a day. I turned it back on. I don't know why. I plan on having it off longer. That's why I was only on a day. It's more for like if you're going to go on vacation for like a week or longer probably. Um, I just don't think I would ever do it again and I know I've seen mixed opinions on if it really affects your shop or not. I did not like how it affected my shop. Of course, it took a few it took a few days to get any like of my listings coming up again, so I was not getting sales during that time. So, I don't know. I would just be more careful about doing it. It also took away all my like I had like two like best seller items or had that little Etsy tag on them. Like that was totally gone when I turned it back on too. So, it does affect your listings at least a little. At least that's I know that for a fact. The other ones are kind of more like I don't know, did it affect um, my products that much of the search? It did for a few days, but is it permanent? I don't know. So I would just avoid that if you can. Obviously, sometimes you won't be able to avoid it, but at least, you know, you can make your processing times really long and then like leave notes everywhere saying, you know, this item won't ship till blah, blah, blah. And you probably will still have to be responding to people, but you can also, I don't know if you can change your automatic message. On, you know, I think you can change it on vacation mode. So you could give it, you could put something in there too about it. So, so those are all my main tips for starting Etsy in 2020. Those are the things that I learned in 2019 that I kind of wish I would have paid more attention to or would have known um, before I started. So hopefully if you're looking to sell on Etsy, you found some of those helpful. So thanks you for watching and I hope you have a great day. See ya.